Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. My topic for today is General Exceptions under Indian Penal Code 1860. There are two types of exceptions under IPC. The first one is excusable and the second is justifiable. In this video, I will explain only excusable exceptions under IPC. Let's understand the meaning of general exception. When a person proved with the commission of an offence and ought to have been punished by law, if he is exempted from such legal punishment under special conditions stipulated in the law, it is known as general exception. That means no matter all the factors are indicating that the person has committed an offence, but still if he is exempted from the law, then it comes under general exception. These provisions specify the absence of the element mens rea in the act of commissions and omissions on the part of the offender of the offence. Mens rea is considered as a very important element of crime and if there is an absence of that element, it comes under general exception under IPC. The meaning of mens rea and the other elements of crime I have explained in my first video. The law offers certain defenses that exculpate criminal liabilities. These defenses are based on the premise that though the person committed the offence, he cannot be held liable. Section 6 of IPC says that every definition of an offence, every penal provision and illustration should be understood subject to the exceptions contained in the chapter titled General Exception. General exception have been explained under section 76 to 106 of IPC. In any case, if a general exception is used as a defense, the burden of proof is on accused. According to section 105 of Indian Evidence Act, when a person is accused of any offence, the burden of proving the existence of circumstances bringing the case within any of the general exceptions in the IPC or within any special exception or proviso contained in any other part of the same code or in any law defining the offence is upon him and the court shall presume the absence of such circumstances. For example, if A is accused of a murder and he alleges that by reason of unsoundness of mind, he did not know the nature of the act, then the burden of proof that the, there is an unsoundness of mind is on A. Similarly, if A is accused of a murder and he alleges that by grave and sudden provocation, he was deprived of the power of self-control, the burden of proof is on A. There are two types of general exception. The first one is justifiable and second is excusable. Thus, for committing a wrong, a person must be responsible for doing a wrongful act without having any justification or excuse for it. A justified act is a one which otherwise under normal conditions would have been wrongful, but the circumstances under which the act was committed made it tolerable and accepted. The person fulfills all the ingredients of the offence, but his conduct is held to be right under the circumstances. Similarly, an excusable act is the one in which though the person has caused harm, it is held that the person should be excused because he cannot be blamed for the act. Excusable Act or Excusable General Exception under IPC are Mistake of Fact, which is Section 76 and 79, Accident under Section 80, Infancy, Section 82 and 83, Insanity, Section 84, and Intoxication, Section 85 to 86. The first general exception is mentioned under Section 76 and 79 of IPC. Section 76 is related to mistake of fact, 
which is bound by law and 79 is related to mistake of fact justified by law. These provisions are based upon the common law maxim that is ignotia fact dot excusit, ignotia juris non excusit, which means ignorance of fact is an excuse, but ignorance of law is not excused. Nothing is an offense which is done by a person who is or who by reason of a mistake of fact and not by reason of a mistake of law in good faith believes himself to be bound by law to do it. For example, if a soldier fires a mob by the order of a superior officer in conformity with the command of law, he has committed no offence. Similarly, if an officer of a court of justice being ordered by that court to arrest Y and after due inquiry believing Z to be Y arrest Z, he has committed no offence. Section 79, that is mistake of fact, believing himself justified by law. In this section, nothing is an offense which is done by any person who is justified by law or who by reason of a mistake of fact and not by reason of a mistake of law in good faith believes himself to be justified by law in doing it. There is a very famous case that is Raj Kapoor versus Lakshman, which is related with the movie Satyam Shivam Sundaram, which was passed by censor board. They have given a certificate to a petitioner, that is Raj Kapoor, under the Cinematography Act 1952, permitting public exhibition of a film Satyam Shivam Sundaram. On being charged under Section 292 of the Code, the petitioner contended that once the certificate permitting public exhibition was given by a competent authority under the Act, they could not be held liable even if the film be obscene or tending to deprave or corrupt public morals. The Supreme Court agreeing with the contention held that once the competent authority in good faith issues the necessary certificate, the petitioner producer and other agencies were protected under this section, read with section 5A of the Act, at least because of their bona fide belief that the certificate is justificatory. Section 80 defines accident as general exception. It says, nothing is an offence which is done by accident or misfortune and without any criminal intent or knowledge in the doing of a lawful act in a lawful manner by lawful means and with proper care and caution. For example, in state of Orissa versus Kuragashi, the accused was a tribal. He went into the forest to hunt the animals. He shot an arrow with a bona fide intention that he aimed at an animal, but the arrow caused the death of a human being. The Orissa Divisional Bench of the High Court acquitted the accused under Section 80. Section 82 and 83 of Indian Penal Code is based upon the principle of Dolly and Capex, which means incapacity of a child. And Section 82 and 83 exempt the wrongful act of a child from the criminal liability. What is the presumption of Dolly and Capex? A child has no discretion to distinguish right from wrong, thus criminal intention does not arise. Hence, the law grants absolute immunity to such an infant from wrongful act. What is Section 82? It says that nothing is an offence which is done by a child under seven years of age. Section 83 Act of child above 7 and under 12 years, which says that nothing is an offence which is done by a child above 7 years of age and under 12, who has not attained sufficient maturity of understanding to judge of the nature and consequence of his conduct on that occasion. Which means, although a child is presumed to be totally incapax, but the maxim malitia supplet 
pythetum may be applied if a child is having a malice supplies age. That means this presumption of doli incapace may be repeated by evidence of mischievous discretion or guilty knowledge that he was doing wrong. If it is proven that he is having a sufficient maturity of understanding, the criminal liability will arise. There is a case, Hira Lal versus State of Bihar, in which a child of 11 years quarreled with the deceased. The child threatened the deceased that he would cut him into pieces. He picked up his knife and actually stabbed the deceased to death. In the prosecution, the defense was pleaded under Section 83. The trial court convicted the boy and held that boy was not entitled to get the immunity under Section 83 because his words, gesture, assault, keeping a knife in his pocket, stab the deceased, etc. shows that the child had attained sufficient maturity of understanding to judge the wrongful act and also the consequence of his act. The Supreme Court upheld the conviction against the accused. Next general exception is act of an insane person described under section 84 of IPC, which says that nothing is an offense which is done by a person who at the time of doing it by reason of unsoundness of mind is incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that he is doing what is either wrong or contrary to law. Some of the ingredients are act must be done due to unsoundness of mind with no free will. It may be done by born idiot, temporary failure of sanity, madman, unconscious, intoxicated, and incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that the act is wrong or contrary to law. Section 84 of IPC is based upon the principle of McNaughton rules of England. In 1843 in England, the accused McNaughton killed Mr. Dermont, the private secretary of British Prime Minister Sir Robert Pell, believing under a mistake that he was killing the Prime Minister. He pleaded insanity and the House of Lords acquitted him of the murder. This generated a lot of public sentiment and debate and the pressure was so much that ultimately the House of Lords had to constitute a special committee of its own judges to finalize the law related to insanity. Accordingly, some questions were put forth before a bench of 14 judges in House of Lords. From the answer given, some rules were framed towards determination of criminal liabilities of insane and were called McNaughton rules. It states that in order to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that at the time of committing the act, the accused was laboring under such a defect of reason from disease of the mind as not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing or if he knew what he was doing that he did not know it was wrong. Next general exception is act of an intoxicated person described under section 85 and 86 of IPC. Section 85 says that nothing is an offense which is done by a person who at the time of doing it is by reason of intoxication incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that he is doing what is either wrong or contrary to law provided that the thing which intoxicated him was administered to him without his knowledge or against his will. That means in this section, there are two words used, without knowledge or against his will, which indicates that the defense is available when either of the two requirements, that is to say lack of knowledge or against his will, is proved. The intoxication is against someone's will, is when he is forced or coerced to take the intoxicant such as where some people by force inject an intoxicant into the body of the accused. 
The next is section 86, which is again based on the principle of intoxication, which says that offense requiring a particular intent or knowledge committed by one who is intoxicated. That means in cases where an act done is not an offense, unless done with a particular knowledge or intent, a person who does the act in a state of intoxication shall be liable to be dealt with as if he had done same knowledge as he would have had if he had not been intoxicated unless the thing which intoxicated him was administered to him without his knowledge or against his will. That means it mainly says that when a person who was voluntarily intoxicated will be treated as one who had full control of his mental faculties. He will be treated as a person who commits the offense in the state of intoxication. The section also gave provisions that deals with the intention of the concerned intoxicated person having to be committed the criminal act. In Vasudev versus State, the accused was a retired Zamidar attended a marriage party in which he drank liquor heavily. He wanted to sit in a chair in which a boy already sat. The accused asked him to stand so that he would sit in it. The boy refused. The accused became annoyed and shot the boy with his pistol. The boy died on the spot. Thereafter, the accused walked to the police station and surrendered him. The accused pleaded that he was heavily intoxicated. The prosecution contended that the defense of the intoxication should not be available to the accused because he took excess liquor voluntarily and also at the time of doing the act, he stood independently. The trial court held that standing, arguing and shooting at the time of incidents and walking to the police station himself without the help of, an, of anybody and surrender himself to the police shows that the accused did not lose his state of mind. He was aware that he was what he was doing. The trial court convict him for the offense of murder. The higher court and Supreme Court also confirmed the conviction. This is all about the short description of excusable general exception. My next video will be related to justifiable general exception. For detailed note, you may visit to my website that is priyasepaha.com. I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.